Hey, hey tribe, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down another practice question. This is rate two practice question number 45, and we actually have two questions within uh, rate two practice question number 45, so stay tuned. Okay, so let's dive into it. So for the first question, a social worker at an agency is meeting with the client to discuss the progress they made so far. During the meeting, the client thanks the social worker and offers them a handmade gift. The social worker inquires about the gift and the client says that giving gifts is a part of their cultural customs. How should the social worker respond next? A, ask the client if additional items can be made for the other social workers at the agency. B, decline the gift to maintain professional boundaries. Or C, accept the gift due to the significance of the client's cultural custom. You know how we do. Take a second, pause, reread through the question, reread through the answer choices, select your best answer, unpause the video, and then we'll jump into the explanation. Okay. If you picked C, you're correct. Why? So A, ask the client if additional items can be made for the other social workers at the agency. This is incorrect. Uh, we're not supposed to ask clients for gifts, so this option would be creating other possible issues, uh, which includes putting pressure on the client to buy slash create additional items. So A is not the correct answer. B, decline the gift to maintain professional boundaries. This is incorrect, and we'll jump into why. And the correct answer is C, accept the gift due to the significance of the client's cultural custom. This is correct. So I know there's a lot of uh, confusion and just misunderstanding when it comes to uh, is social workers allowed to accept gifts? Are we not allowed to accept gifts? We understand that, okay, if a client offers us something extravagant like a like a house, we're not going to accept the house, but what about this uh, item? What about this gift, right? So generally speaking, meaning 99% of the time, the majority of the time, generally speaking, we don't accept gifts from clients. When offered a gift, the social worker should respond by, and notice how I had these numbered as number one, number two, and number three. So number one, asking slash exploring the reason for the gift if that option is available. And I'm gonna also throw in if it hasn't already been covered within the question. Because when we scroll back up, and this part emphasizes uh, that this is a reading exam, a social worker at an agency is meeting with the client to discuss the progress they made so far, okay? During the meeting, the client thanks the social worker and offers them a handmade gift. The social worker inquires about the gift and the client says that giving gifts is a part of their cultural customs. So within the question itself, it already spoke to that and that's also why it's not one of the answer choices because we don't wanna immediately um, accept or decline a gift. We want to explore what's the meaning, what's the significance behind the gift. And for that one in particular, it was already covered. So now we go to number two. Adhere to the agency slash organization policy on accepting gifts if that option is available. I've done my Googles. I've, I've talked to other social workers. Every There is no hard rule about, hey, this is the dollar amount limit to accept the gift or not. My own personal experience at the agencies I've worked at, there is no um, set in stone rule as far as um, anything we'll find in the code of ethics that says once it goes over $20, too expensive, social workers can't accept that. Once it goes over $10, once it goes over $100, there's nothing out there like that that says it. Um, because it's, it's going to be so dependent on the area that you're working with, the particular client, like exactly what's the nature of the gift, all of that, right? So uh, your agency, your organization may have a specific rule, a policy regarding um, gift accepting, where if it's something like a thank you card or anything like that, it's like, oh, that's fine. Or as it pertains to culture, and that goes into number three, accept the gift if the exam highlights that the gift is a part of the client's coach, uh, culture, the gift is of low monetary value, and the social worker believes not accepting the gift would negatively impact the therapeutic relationship with the client. Because again, there's no concrete rule that speaks to this for all social workers that says, hey, if it goes over this dollar amount, 
um, uh, it, it's too much. It's too much. But if it falls with under that dollar amount, it's perfectly fine. It's acceptable. So we always want to hear to our HC um, guidelines, rules when it comes to um, gifts when offered by clients and for the exam and in real life as well. If it's part of the client's cultural customs, uh, we believe not accepting it would uh, impact, negatively impact the relationship that we have with the clients that we can accept. But of course, always check with our agency. So this is how we want to respond to those gift um, accepting type of questions. Uh, number one, ask us explore the reason for the gift if the option is available. Number two, adhere to the agency slash organization policy on accepting gifts if that option is available. And then number three, Accept the gift if the exam highlights that the gift is a part of the client's culture. The gift is of low monetary value. If the social worker believes not accepting the gift uh, would negatively impact the therapeutic relationship with the client. Now let's go to question number two. A social worker meets with the client and informs them of their overdue balance at the start of session. The client says they provide landscaping services as payment to other professionals within the community and ask the social worker if they would accept their offer as well. What should the social worker do next? A, decline the client's request to avoid a dual relationship. B, discuss the details of the services to be provided. C, obtain consent to speak with the professionals that have utilized the client's services. Or D, refer the client to another social worker for continuation of care. So again, pause the video. We read through the question, we read through the answer choices, pick your best answer, unpause the video, and we'll jump into the explanation. Okay, if you picked B, you are correct. Why? So B, decline the client's request to avoid a dual relationship. This is incorrect. So just like we were covering earlier with do, does the social worker accept the gift or not, Generally speaking, meaning the majority of the time, 99% of the time, generally speaking, we don't participate in bartering. As social workers, we can participate in bartering if this is an accepted practice among professionals in the local community, the client initiated the proposal and gave informed consent, and the social worker accepts full uh, burden of demonstrating that this arrangement will not be detrimental to the client or the professional relationship because they don't want social workers uh, taking advantage of any clients because like, oh, you, oh, you provide landscaping services. Oh, that's great. Uh, uh, yeah, my place, uh, my, my business needs some landscaping services and yet yeah, for us to initiate that. So that's why that's in place. Um, but again, generally speaking, we don't uh, participate in bartering. And remember, bartering is the exchange of services or goods for other goods or services. So when we scroll back up, it says within the question, the client says they provide landscaping services as payment to other professionals within the community and ask the social worker if they would accept their offer as well. Remember, it's not always going to present the question or even the answer choices for that matter in a nice, clean cut way where it just says, hey, a social worker meets with a client who would like to participate in bartering. What should the social worker do next? Right. This question is describing what's happening where unless we're just in a, a town full of uh, unethical uh, behavior, exchanging, you know, good for services and everything, I imagine this is a just a common practice within this uh, community. And the client is inquiring with the social worker, hey, can I offer my services like I do with other professionals with you as well? So that's why we the answer is B, discuss the details of the services to be provided. So according to the NASW Code of Ethics, 1.13 Payment for Services, Section B, social workers should avoid accepting goods or services from clients as payment for professional services. Uh, bartering arrangements, particularly involving services, create the potential for conflicts of interest, exploitation, and inappropriate boundaries in social workers' relationships with clients. Social workers should explore and may participate in bartering only in very limited circumstances when it can be demonstrated that such arrangements are an accepted practice among professionals in the local community, considered to be essential for the provision of services, negotiated without coercion, and entered into the at the client's initiative and with the client's informed consent, 
Social workers uh, who accept goods or services from clients as payment for professional services assume the full burden of demonstrating that the arrangement will not be detrimental to the client or the professional relationship. So again, it's uh, described within the question that, hey, this is a, a local practice uh, within a community. Clearly, if this client has been doing it with other professionals, but even still, notice how in this uh, question right here with this answer choice, we're not accepting or declining and saying like, oh yeah, that's perfectly fine or no, we don't do that. We're literally just saying, we're discussing the details of the services to people provide it. So, hey, what you got going on with your landscaping uh, business? How does that look if, if we were to participate in that, if, I, if we did agree as the social worker? How does that look? We're just having a conversation about it to see if we agree or disagree. And also, this option, again, doesn't decline the client's offer. This option allows the social worker to obtain additional information to confirm if it's a common practice within the community, how it was carried out and if the social worker would like to participate or not, and C is incorrect, obtain consent to speak with the professionals that have utilized the client services. Yes, this could be something that occurs to a lot of social worker to obtain more insight into bartering practices, uh, but the next thing uh, would be to discuss the details with the client first. And D, refer the client to another social worker for continuation of care. This is incorrect. This option doesn't address if the current social worker will participate in bartering or not, right? Because we just want to have a discussion about it first and see what we ultimately decide. Okay, Tribe, that's it for today's video. Again, that was grade two practice question number 45. And <laughs> you know how I say doing at least two practice questions a day and at least one practice exam a month helps keep the exam anxiety at bay. And this question in particular, it had two on it. So we did our two practice questions a day. So you know, imagine it if we're taking, you know, two, three months to study and we're doing two a day, 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 and at least one practice exam a month, that tends to put us in pretty good shape to go in there and pass our exam. Um, so remember, two practice questions a day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell a social referent because we don't want to be licensed by ourselves. All right, Tribe, I'll see you next video.